Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So if you guys do not know, breaking news about an hour ago, the police just did an update on the whole Carly Russell situation. And they are basically stating and confirming what a lot of us critical thinkers have been feeling for a while now about the Carly Russell situation is that everything was a lie made up by Carly Russell. And um, Carly Russell, through her lawyer, has basically issued an apology for lying. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news conference. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. After reading the statement, we will have time for a few questions related to the case. Keep in mind. This is still an ongoing investigation, and there are some questions we simply cannot answer at this point. With that, I'll turn it over to Chief Durses. Thank you, Captain. Yes. Good afternoon. Thanks to everyone for attending again today. I want to thank the members of our department and all of law enforcement who played a role in the investigation of this case. Last Wednesday, July 19th, we held a press conference and provided you with the facts of the Carly Russell disappearance. We told you the investigation was ongoing. We helped you determine where Carly was during the 49 hours of her disappearance. Today, I've talked to and received a statement from Mr. Emery Anthony, attorney for Carly Russell. Mr. Anthony has scheduled a meeting for Carly to meet with investigators early this afternoon, but then I received an email stating that a statement was being provided by him on her behalf. Mr. Anthony asked that I read the statement in its entirety, which I will do now. My client has given me permission to make the following statement on her behalf. There was no kidnapping on Thursday, July 13, 2023. My client did not see a baby on the side of the road. My client did not leave the Hoover area when she was identified as a missing person. My client did not have any help in this incident, but this was a single act done by herself. My client was not with anyone or any hotel with anyone from the time she was missing. My client apologizes for her actions to this community, the volunteers who were searching for her, to the Hoover Police Department and other agencies as well, as to her friends and family. We ask for your prayers for Carly as she addresses her issues and attempts to move forward, understanding that she made a mistake in this matter. Carly, again, ask for your forgiveness and prayers. We have a meeting scheduled with Mr. Anthony to further discuss this case. We're currently in discussions with the Jefferson County District Attorney's Office in Bessemer about possible criminal charges related to this case, and we will announce those charges when and if they are filed. All right, with that, we'll take a few questions. As Officer Hale said, when I call on you, please state your name and your affiliation. Yes, sir. Chief Mims, WAGG 610 100.1 FM Summit Media. Uh, Chief, do we at this time, or does the Hoover Police Department know the whereabouts of Carly Russell during that 49-hour period that she was supposedly missing? Now, as I said the other day, was talking facts and everything. If I said anything today, it would just be speculation. Actual facts, we do not. Aaron Lula, WBC 13. Can you tell us where, or excuse me, what her motivation was for doing this, if you can? I wish I could tell you. I think only uh, Carly knows and maybe her attorney now, but uh, again, the statement that we received from him does not indicate any. Brittany DOWDRC, can you give us an idea of what charges you may be filing against her? Uh, that would strictly be up to the district attorney's office. David Lamb, CBS 42, can you uh, update us so that there is a meeting scheduled for this afternoon with the family, or, or no. when is that meeting? Yeah. Uh, no, not uh, a meeting with the attorney. Not the family or Carly. We have a meeting scheduled with the attorney, and that will take place some point tomorrow. And there is no meeting with Carly Russell or her family at this point? Not scheduled, no, sir. Brady Chapman with Fox 6. What's next to close this investigation? Well, again, we want to uh, talk to uh, talk to Mr. Anthony tomorrow and uh, and see if he has any uh, any more to discuss about uh, about the case. Uh, we'll certainly be asking if uh, if we'll get an opportunity to uh, again interview uh, Carly like we've wanted to since uh, since she returned. 
Chief Stephen Quinn, ABC 3340. Yes, sir. Your reaction now, knowing that Carly has admitted that this was made up. Well, I'm, I'm glad that we got this. You know, we uh, we certainly laid the facts out to, to the to the to the you know to, to you guys and and to the national uh, media that had a lot of interest in this particular case. Uh, uh, the the sad thing is that uh, again there were so many people that uh, that were involved uh, took this thing very very seriously and uh, and again we wanted the focus to be bringing her home she got home we're very excited about that uh, you know just uh, you know it is what it is uh, the facts I think last uh, Wednesday uh, pretty much showed that uh, we knew that it was uh, it was a hoax. Lisa. Lisa Crane with WDTM 13. Do you know the expense you went to during this search? And if you don't have a, a dollar figure for us, just the how big it was for you guys. Well, it was uh, it was all hands on deck, and uh, and we don't have a dollar figure yet, but. Uh, uh, we're, we're certainly working uh, towards getting one, and not only ours, but there'll be uh, there'll be other agencies that uh, that had a lot of a uh, lot of support that they gave us, and had monetary expenses themselves. Right here. Jonathan, uh, John, what JLR investigates are the parents under in, in investigation. You know, as I said the other day, uh, we were going to try to determine exactly those 49 hours. So right now, you know, and anything's on the table. We're, we, we still don't know what happened in those 49 hours, where she was, did she have any help? We have no idea. You know, I read the statement from Mr. Anthony, and that's all we know. Right. Chief, Chief Mims, uh, uh, WAGG 16, uh, Summit Media. Chief, let me ask you this. What do you think prompted or provoked Carly to uh, do this kind of thing? And um, are there any kind of mental issues that uh, the police department or the public should be concerned about or just what? You know, not that I'm aware of. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, this is a very elaborate, this was an elaborate deal. I mean, when you talk about calling a 911 and, and, and being up on the interstate, uh, uh, again, it would all be conjecture. Uh, so really, uh, I don't know. I was hoping that we'd have an opportunity to interview and we'd be able to ask, ask her those questions. Were any others involved in putting this story together for her? Uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, in his statement, says there was not. Right Liviana Kelly, WBRC, Fox 6 News. Um, you said that you had a meeting scheduled and it kind of switched into a statement. Did they give any type of reason that that switched? No, they did not. Back here. Uh, Aaron Llewellyn, WBT 13. Um, just for clarification, Carly Russell is not in custody right now. That is correct. That is correct. Last question with David. David Lamb, once again. So, first of all, when did you actually see this letter? And, and second of all, do these admissions and the content of the letter alter the investigation at all? No, not at all. Uh, we'll continue to investigate. We're still trying to determine where those where she was those, during those 49 hours. But uh, I am glad that we received this. It, it at least puts uh, puts some of the social media super sleuths uh, hopefully at rest for a little bit as far as uh, what everyone, the conjecture of what everybody thinks took place. Uh, we know that, uh, that uh, by her own admission, it didn't happen. And, uh, you know, we're thankful for that. All right, thank you guys very much. All right, so you guys just saw what the head detective had to say about the situation. And, you know, that's cute that she apologized, but at the end of the day, she wasted resources, and she basically embarrassed her parents, the town. I mean, people went really hard for this woman, as they should have, like I said prior. You know, I'd rather they go hard for her and that it ends up being some BS like this than people not caring and she ends up dead. But with that being said, you know, just because she apologizes and she feels bad for her actions now that she's been caught, there should definitely still be some consequences because, you know, I see people saying, well, forgive and forget, things happen, she's probably going through stuff. Um, no. Remember, we had posted the other day on Instagram about the white lady who had lied. She was a mommy blogger, and she lied and stated that some Mexican people tried to take her children and it ended up being a lie. So she was not only arrested, she was charged, and she got some jail time. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this clip right here. A viral video is now putting a Northern California mom behind bars. Here's the deal. She's a blogger who was found guilty of lying about a Latino couple allegedly trying to kidnap her children. Monday of this week, my children were the targets of attempted kidnap. 
31-year-old Katie Sorensen, who posted beauty and motherhood advice, uploaded this video that was viewed more than 4 million times. And I want to share that story with you in an effort to raise awareness as to what signs to look for. She falsely claimed that strangers tried to kidnap her two young children on December 7, 2020, outside the Petaluma, California Michael store. The Sonoma County DA's office says the videos were posted about a week after Sorensen reported the supposed kidnapping attempt to police. In the video, she described a number of details about the alleged incident that had not been disclosed to police. The accused couple, Sadie and Eddie Martinez, say they recognized themselves in this photo and came forward to deny Sorensen's claims. She wanted a stronger following. She was looking for, you know, content for her fame and her, her income. Um, and at our expense. Sorensen's attorney maintains his client did not lie to police. She misperceived and misunderstood a series of random events which were occurring around her and made a honest report to the police on December 7th. I don't think she had any understanding of how this would spread and the impact it would cause. Legal experts say this verdict is about accountability. This is a woman who lied for clicks at the expense of a couple in California who wrongly accused them of a very serious crime. That mother has been taken into custody and she is now being held on $100,000 bail. She could face up to six months in jail. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So to me, with the whole Carly Russell situation, People need to stop dismissing it as some type of mistake, as a mental health breakdown. This was not a mistake. This was premeditated. This was calculated. And even when you listen to her talking about the situation when she caught the 911 operator, very cunning. You know what I'm saying? She knew what she was doing. She did all of this deceptive bullshit for attention, um, allegedly because her boyfriend was talking to somebody else and she was trying to get his attention. That's some of the rumors that are being put out there. But rumors aside, what she did has been proven to be false. There was no child there. And, you know, let's also not forget the fact that she wasted people's time. She had people in her town coming together, putting on search parties, you know, trying to find her. And she had the nerve to be in town the whole time. So now I believe those people who said that she, that she was at the Red Roof Inn, people who said that they had seen her at a fair, and when she, you know people started recognizing her, they claimed that she ran off. I'm starting to believe all those people now because it's coming out that she never left town. It wasn't like she you know, ran across the state borders. She saw all these people looking for her, and she kicked back in the hotel room and enjoyed the shit show. Ooh, there's a lot going on. You know, that to me is just cunning and disgusting. And just because she says sorry does not mean that, you know, everything should just be forgiven and swept under the rug. You know, that's good that you're taking ownership and you're apologizing, but there's still consequences. It's no different than if you rob somebody at gunpoint and then, you know, you get caught and you say, well, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have did it. I wasn't in my right mind. Okay, that's cute. But, you know, there's still consequences. And ignorance of the law or not having full scope of what those consequences are criminally does not negate the consequences. You know what I'm saying? She still needs to be charged, point blank, period. Also, let's not forget, too, that they raised a bunch of money on GoFundMe. Um, and I hope those people get their money back. But on top of GoFundMe, people in the community raised money that had nothing to do with the Internet. They raised money to give to Carly's family to help them, you know, through the week to buy groceries and things like that. Where is that money going? You know, I hope her family ends up giving back every last dime, especially being that their daughter was found alive and well. So this entire situation is just really disheartening, but I hate how people are trying to chop it up to a mistake. This was absolutely not a mistake. This was a case of attention-seeking gone wrong, and she needs to be held accountable. So that way we don't have any more monkey see, monkey do's, because it's one thing to attention-seek for something stupid, like, oh, somebody wrote something racist or homophobic on my receipt. I want money. It's another thing when people are doing monkey see, monkey do to kidnappings. Because, again, we live in a world where human trafficking is real, kidnapping is real, and we don't need any more of these jokers out here trying to make a farce out of kidnapping, not when there are real victims out here. 
So with that being said, I leave the question up to you guys. How do you guys feel about the situation? Do you feel like she should be charged for her crime and that the apology is not significant? And then also, um, if you feel like she should be charged, how much time should she get? Most of these cases that I've seen where people have lied about kidnappings, where, you know, nobody died or anything, most of them have gotten three to six months from what I've seen. I leave the question up to you guys, and I can't wait to read y'all's comments. So make sure you leave your thoughts down below. And also, don't forget to like and share the video. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.